I'm delighted to welcome to the podium the 32nd Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General Pete Corelli. Thanks to my uh, good friend, Dr. Malcolm O'Neill, for that kind introduction, and thanks for the great work you're doing on behalf of our Army as Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology during a critical period in our nation's history. In addition to not addressing you in person, I regret being unable to walk through the Science and Technology Showcase. I got a report from Kathy, Dr. Kathy Quinker who indicated it was absolutely fantastic. I was looking forward to seeing the exhibits and displays of the various tools and, and, and developments currently underway. Maybe it's because I'm a words guy and not a science uh, or math guy, but I'm always fascinated to see new technologies emerging as well as enhancements made to existing capabilities. I think part of the reason my XO urged me to stay in, uh, in DC and give my speech uh, via video teleconference was because he was worried he'd never get me out of the exhibit hall. Now, all, all joking aside, this conference brings together a lot of very smart people. And in doing so, it provides a great opportunity for, for collaboration. I hope everyone there will take time to uh, this week to, to walk through the display floor, um, see what others are, are doing on behalf of our Army and soldiers, and get into some good discussions, and, and ask the tough questions of one another. I'll certainly be happy to answer any questions you have for me, but before going to questions and answers, I, I'd like to do a couple of things. First. I want to encourage you to keep up the great work. You're enhancing soldiers' capability, both on the battlefield and off, and, and you're saving lives. Second, I want to challenge you to look for opportunities to improve or expand, especially in the areas specific to soldier and family care, such as medical treatment and rehabilitation, reintegration and behavioral health. And I'll talk more about these later in my remarks. For those of you who don't know, it's the vice's job to worry about things, and I worry as the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan wind down, people will think we can ratchet back our efforts, or worse, we're done, we can stop doing what we're doing. I assure you that's not the case. There's much work to be done, and we are going to need your help. Many of you have probably heard me talk about my iPhone. I bought the original iPhone, and as soon as it was available, I threw that phone in the drawer and bought the iPhone 3G, then the iPhone 3GS, and now I've got the iPhone 4G. I also have an iPad, a, a Kindle, and all sorts of other electronics equipment at home. And I'll admit I may have a bit of a pro problem, but I really believe these technologies represent where we need to be headed in terms of capability advancements and pace of development. Let's face it. If, if the idea for the iPhone had gone through the Army's acquisition system in 5000.2, we'd still be years away from fielding the first generation of that device. In the past, our Army acquisition process was able to keep pace with technology. However, that's not the case today, and our soldiers cannot afford to sit and wait. Regrettably, we've made little progress in this area, in my opinion. Given time constraints, I, I, I will not talk further on this topic. Suffice it to say, if we want to say, stay relevant and effective in this new strategic environment, we must opt, update our processes. In the meantime, we must figure out how to accommodate the growing variety of systems and capabilities available on today's battlefield. And this is one area where we really need your help. The most important effort, in my opinion, is the network. I believe it re represents the centerpiece of Army modernization. Ultimately, the network will connect leaders and soldiers at all levels, at every echelon and command, in any formation and across the entire team, with the right information quickly and seamlessly. In doing so, I am confident it will make our various formations more lethal, faster, and survivable. It will redefine how we fight. The network must be a single, affordable, cost-effective network that will allow any system or application, whether developed by the Army, our allies, or some other agency, to plug and play using a common operating environment 
that ensures the systems and applications are interoperable and user friendly from the start. And I just want to make sure everybody knows we have published that common operating environment. And I know the ASALT community is working very, very hard to put in place the governance um, that will ensure that um, people understand uh, that is their left and right hand limit. I recognize many of you are involved in the development of the network and related capabilities. What you're doing is incredibly important, and I'd ask you to keep at it. Well, the network represents the most important aspect of Army modernization. The reality is much of what we're trying to accomplish in this endeavor in terms of improving the pace of Army acquisition to leverage both military development and private sector technologies as application across the entire modernization program. As those of you involved in our vehicle modernization effort are aware, over the past year or so, the Army has changed the way we look at weapon platform acquisition with a goal to shorten the process in order to keep pace with technology developments. Of course, the vehicle receiving the most attention is the ground combat vehicle, or GCV. It re represents one of the most important combat development and acquisition decisions we'll make over the next seven years. In this new era of warfare, our goal is to build a vehicle that is capable of operating in all environments across the full spectrum of conflict, a vehicle that will have built into it the ability to transition back and forth between offense, defense, and stability operations, depending on the situation on the ground and the enemy threat. All of you involved in this effort are doing great work, helping to develop capabilities packages that can be added or removed from a vehicle depending upon the specific mission or threat levels. You are making great strides toward developing advances in armor, including uh, material composites that will ultimately provide greater protection at uh, reduced weights. Once fielded, the GCV is sure to be a remarkable piece of equipment, and it is absolutely needed in today's full-spectrum environments. That said, the added capability of the GCV will provide is not the only unique aspect of this program. How we're trying to build it, that's also going to make the GCV revolutionary. We're attempting to accelerate the timeline for a major weapon platform acquisition program from the traditional 10 to 12 year cycle to five to seven years. Recognizing that the key to doing so is to design a platform that is versatile and able to accommodate a wide range of configuration and capability changes and incremental improvements over time. Without a doubt, this goal represents a significant challenge for the United States Army. That said, I cannot emphasize enough its critical importance to the success of our force now and into the future, both in terms of enhanced capability and overall process improvement. The science and technology community is intimately involved in these and other endeavors in the material realm. And I thank you for your hard work and ask that you continue doing what you're doing. It is incredibly important. That said, I'd like to take the opportunity to again emphasize the various efforts way in the area of soldier and family member care, specifically related to traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, and other behavioral health conditions. The fact remains, these wounds are not well understood, yet they affect a significant portion of the Army's wounded warrior population. And although the Army is taking a holistic approach to dealing with these very serious injuries, the reality is the study of the brain is incredibly complex and rather immature. Most efforts aimed at diagnosing and treating these conditions are in their infancy. Many of you are doing critical research in these important areas, both in terms of diagnosis and treatment, as well as with regards to blast protection and overall combat casualty care. Don't stop. Soldiers need your help. That said, I encourage you to expand your efforts. Look to any and every opportunity to connect and collaborate with government agencies and other organizations to share lessons and to help develop solutions and methods to better identify and treat these conditions. Most importantly, I strongly urge you to actively pursue opportunities to collaborate with experts, physician researchers, and other professional, professionals within the civilian medical community. 
They, too, are studying and attacking these issues very, very, very hard at highly respected hospitals, research laboratories, universities, and medical facilities around the world. And they represent the added knowledge, expertise, and resources. It would be foolish, in my opinion, to not join and cooperate with each other in this incredibly shared endeavor. I cannot say it more simply. Unfortunately, I recognize this can be easier said than done. The United States Army is a very large, extremely capable, and proud organization. And the truth is, sometimes we, we resist seeking or accepting outside help because we believe we can do the job all on our own. Again, I, I think we miss a tremendous opportunity by not expanding our efforts and looking for ways to partner with others outside of the military. And I would make a similar pitch to them on behalf of, uh, of the Army science and technology community. Ultimately, what we ch achieve together will be the better. We'll realize it sooner, and our soldiers and families will benefit. I understand tomorrow's agenda is packed with speakers, presentations, and panels on the topics of regenerative medicine, traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, and suicide. And several of the speakers are from the civilian medical community. I hope all of you will take full advantage of the program and learn as much as you possibly can on these subjects. Meanwhile, as we work together to develop technology solutions to answer specific needs, we should also be looking for ways to expand the application of existing technologies to other areas. You may refer to this as tech transfer. We're seeing this type of collaboration occurring today between the Army and Indy car racing as we look for ways to incorporate the accelerometer technology into our vehicles to measure blast impacts. And this is just one example. The reality is there's an infinite number of possibilities, and many of the unique challenges we're currently facing will require this type of critical thinking. Let me give you a, another example. The Army is currently facing the very complex task of reintegrating reintegrating soldiers back into their units, families, and communities after nearly a decade of war. We need your help developing technologies and capabilities that will improve and expand upon our ability to provide much needed support to them and to their family members. The Army is currently working to develop telehealth models of care that take advantage of communication technologies such as the telephone, the internet, video conferencing, email, or text messaging. These initiatives are especially important for veterans or reserve component soldiers with medical and behavioral health issues, including post-traumatic stress, who live away from medical treatment facilities, VA facilities, and other support systems. We are pursuing a variety of capabilities that can support Army programs that assist soldiers and families, including substance abuse and financial and relationship issues. We deal with the very serious and complex challenges that lie ahead. This community, the Scientology community, has a role to play in the continued success of our Army. The technologies and treatments that you are designing, identifying, and fielding leaders, soldiers, and provide ability well into the future. As I said earlier, our work is not finished. It has begun. The reality is we'll lead the same or even greater level of support years ahead as our leaders tackle the many challenges facing a force focused on restoring balance and in integrating soul back into their units, families, and communities for a decade of war. I challenge all of you to continue the work you're doing on behalf of our Army. For opportunity to improve or expand upon an effort to provide or better capabilities that can be effectively employed by leaders and soldiers across our force, both on and off the field. I appreciate the opportunity to join, you, even if it is from long distance in Chile, Washington, D.C. And now I'd like to open it up for any questions or comments you might have. Army Strong, and thank you very much.